So this is one of the important case for respiratory system, station one. Once again, the face is exam for MRC. So my dear, listen very carefully. Young boy, having such a short stature, you see the look, the short stature, young boy, having some of the skeletal deformity, sitting like that. And if I ask him a question, right, can you give a cuff for me? A kashi then? Abarakta kashi then? So at this moment, his cuff is dry because he's on treatment. So if he has the productive scooter, so he could make something assumption. The patient may have some of the diagnosis, like the bronchitis, at the spot diagnosis, basically. So having a young man short stage, having some of the skeletal deformities, having sput and productive, so you should think about right the cystic diagnosis, the So immediately after that, basically what we have done, what is our approach basically? Our approach is start with the symmetry, always symmetry. Symmetry of the chest will give us a lot of clues. So it to show you that So I have to go there and tell him, take a deep breath in and out all the way through. Right, thank you. So it does mean his chest is expanding, not that much that we are expecting in a normal person. So he has reduced his chest expansion, which is symmetrically reduced on the both sides. So having once again, we have learned it, having symmetrical chest expansion, you come up here and you look at into the epidermis whether it is increased or not. If the epidermis has increased, once again, diagnosis, whether it's COPD or bronchiectasis. Next question is crackles. So your stethoscope will help to pick up the crackles so that you can diagnose your case. Is that bronchiectasis rather than COPD? Very simple. So start with the symmetry, come up here with the epidermis, and look for the crackles on the chest side, and give you diagnosis of bronchiectasis. Clear. So that is basically our approaches. Once again, another approach that we can apply. Start with the hands first. So show me hands. So seeing his hands, compare my my nail hands, all right? And if you see the nail bed and air angles, these are typically having a clubbing. And I have many times said that the clubbing having the diagnosis the first C4 stands for the CFA, means the cryptogenic fibrosing and diagnosis. Second diagnosis is the cystic fibrosis. Third diagnosis was in the cancer, CCC. So these are the important three Cs, serially, starting from the CFA, CF, and as well as the cancer. And also another variety of cancer we call the mesothelioma. Don't forget, mesothelioma is one of the important causes of cancer. So must to be remembered. Along with the cystic fibrosis itself is a cause of bronchiectasis. So once again, the bronchiectasis is a variety of pyogenic lung disease. So once again, the pyogenic lung disease we divide into A, B, C, D, E. It does mean A for abscess, B for bronchiectasis, C for cystic fibrosis, and D is cut, and E for environment. So these are the causes basically the, in a respiratory station that we get it from. So once again, as I said, the clubbing, the first diagnosis, the CFA, all right. And second diagnosis is cystic fibrosis, means the bronchitis is causes. And another approach that we started for the symmetry, epidermal increase, having crackles, diagnosis done the bronchitis. So as I said, my dear, whenever you are presenting your cases, you start with the first diagnosis, what variety of lung disease it is. Means the chronic lung disease. So chronic lung disease, what variety of lung disease? So you need to confirm whether it is bronchitis. So as the approach that we started, like the symmetry, come up with the epidermis is increased, and then you just sit back to the patient. Definitely you do all the procedures, all the steps of examinations here. I'm not going through all the details here. Just I'd like to see the crackles to confirm my diagnosis whether this is not good. Just put the stethoscope and just tell him, take a deep breath in and out. Once again, yes. Yes. 
So one of the sound that I found, my dear, is very important. I'll make you right, give a chances to listen this one. This is called the click in spiritual eclipse. I said it the day one. Remember, when the present in your case, the presence of in spiritual eclipse is a petrogonic features of rocket places. So he has got it, a typical sound which is never you get any other findings of bronchial cases or any other cases, like the say for lung fibrosis or in, in, in any other cases. So once again the inspirative clicks, or we call the inspirative squawks, right? Along with, yes, the coarse, both inspirative and expirative crackles, having vesicular with prolonged expiration, once again making the diagnosis of bronchial cases. So what we have done basically, we started the approach like the symmetry, <coughs> epidermal increased, got a crackles and also the squeaks, diagnosis done the bronchial cases. So if a candidate of a face's exam is start with them, that the, yes, my clinical diagnosis of bronchitis. So you got only six out of 20. So you have to go further to say the second step of complication. I say the complication is the PhD, means the pulmonary hypertension. So just look at the legs, part to take to that one. So absolutely, there is no leg edema. No leg edema at the best side, it does mean this gentleman's bronchial tissue is not complicated by pulmonary hypertension as well as for pulmonary. So we can say yes, the bronchial tissue is not complicated by pulmonary hypertension as well as not complicated by core pulmonary. Third talk that we already said about the respiratory failure because this is a chronic lung disease. Third step that you must come up whether this patient develop any chronic lung disease leading to yes. Once again, respiratory failure. So respiratory failure, my dear, once again, that is the reduced oxygen tension and also the carbon dioxide tension, whatever the ways. So we need to get the best side findings. If the patient is on, we have seen the patient is on the oxygen dependent sometimes. So yes, the patient needs the oxygen. So yes, maybe the patient is on respiratory failure. So in that case, we need to do at the bedside ABG reporting so that we can say, right, this gentleman is on respiratory failure. Otherwise, bronchitis itself is an obstructive airway disease. So already we talked about the carbon dioxide tension. So you start with the hands. Did I have the hand? Right. And feel the palms, warm palms. All right. And once again, feel the pulse, whether it's bounding pulses or not. So this is not bounding, basically. And also, once again, can you stretch your fingers? and cock up your wristband and to look for any respiratory failure type to already have it in the heart. So what is said basically, we stepped up. Number one, the chronic lung disease variety is the bronchitis, evidenced by epidemic increase, symmetrically reduced with typical squeaks or inspiratory clicks or crackles. Second important point that we say that is not complicated by PST or Cochrane. Third component we say, this gentleman having no feature of respiratory failure, maybe a feature of respiratory failure in the type 1, but we need to confirm it by the images. If you crossed over these three, yes, most of the candidates will get 18 out of 20 having a chance. The last but not the least, always talk about the etiology. So work on the etiology is one of the most important. The fourth part, yes. Basically, in the UK, if a young man having such a bronchitis, the first diagnosis should be that cystic diagnosis. So, saying that a young man having bronchitis, I think, and I put my first underlying etiology is yes, cystic diagnosis. Yes, there are a lot of possibilities. The second differential diagnosis that we call, yes, hypogamma, name is another possibility. So, remember, my dear, this cystic fibrosis and bronchitis. Hypogamma glorinemia, these both cases usually infecting the respiratory system as well as the GI system because these both systems are exposed to the environment. So there is a chance to infections enter into easily and to infect them many, many times since their childhood, leading to, yes, the respiratory system damaging, causing bronchitis, and also the GI damaging, leading to malabsorption. Sometimes I say that. Bronchitis plus malabsorption is the first diagnosis is 
once again cystic fibrosis and second is the hypogammaglobulinemia. Mm -hmm. So whenever you are presenting your case, you start with microlical diagnostic bronchial cases, evidenced by even that, not complicated by pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary, but having maybe features of respiratory failure in the form of carbon dioxide retention or not. And I think the cystic fibrosis might be diagnosis. I would like to confirm my diagnosis by doing a HRCD test to look for the extent of the damage of the lungs, what happened to the him. And second thing, I can do the pulmonary function test that gives us the diagnosis of obstructing lung defect. Along with that, to confirm my diagnosis, to do a test, there is a sweat draw a test. Sweat for 70 means greater than 70. Once again, is a diagnosis that we can do. Another thing, as you know, cystic fibrosis is a case of F, uh, autosomal recessive disorder. It's a genetics, it's a question usually asked in your exam. So autosomal recessive disorder, once again, the mutation, the large number of mutations that can be. So remember the DEL508 and also CFTR, these two, three, four, five names that will be asked and impress the examiner. And yes, once again, the treatment starts, with general treatment, specific treatment, and once again, a surgical treatment. So I'd like to put this young man, of course, on some of the general treatment. First of all, because of the problem is expectoration. So I need to make the person to expectorate, to give the exact and proper physiotherapy, active cycle breathing test. And also these things that will be help him to expect more and more calm and screw them out of, of it. Along with that, you can use some of the mycolytics. There are new, new mycolytics also. And also put the patient always for a long-term endomyosis. And if the patient having the bronchospasm, you can use the bronchodilators. If the patient needs oxygen, you can give the oxygen. And of course, if the patient or this young man is on, of course, taking some of the smoking, so send him to the smoking cessation clinic. And must do the vaccinations, all the possible vaccinations that are exposed to the ear. So yes, of course, the pneumococcal and pneumophilus vaccination. Along with that, yes, of course, you need to work on, yes, if this is gentleman, having involvement of the lungs as well as the, the cardiovascular system because of pulmonary hypertension, yes, the heart lung transplantation can be a good curative treatment for his case. And last but not the least, for the family members that you can do some of the genetic counselor for the father, future, all these things together. So I think this gentleman, right, thank you very much for helping for the, all the young doctors here. All right, so thank you very much. So thank you, thank you all. Right? So, AJ, X-ray that you want to see. X-ray that you want to see. X-ray that you want to see. Yes, he had a cystic fibrosis. Post-TV. Cystic fibrosis. Young man. TV2 is a little bit analyzed. That's what you have to say. What's the problem? But cystic, young man cystic fibrosis. What's the problem? There are other 